Good morning, everybody. This is Thomas Ott for NeuralMarketTrends.com, and welcome to my fifth video tutorial on Rapid Miner 5.0. Where we last left off in video number four was the creation of a genetic optimization data preprocessor experiment in which we took some generated data, ran it into the genetic algorithm that would then distill the data set into the better fit attributes to help describe the output. And if you remember from video number four, this is a nested nested operation. So the genetic optimizer selection set is a nested system where we have the validating operator in it, which has this, which has another nested process that has a support vector machine that does the learning. It has the apply model in the testing section and then, and then it supplies a performance measure. So we didn't run the experiment in video tutorial number four because I wanted to tweak a few things here and show you a few more things. Number one, if you select this operator right here, you will see here on the right a couple of parameters that you can modify. Uh, selection direction, normalized weights, etc. And if you wanted to find out more about the operator, you can either look down here, which gives a little more um, explanation about what it does, or you could even right click on here and you can select F1, show operator info. And it'll give you an overview here which tells you what the ports require, the evaluation process, and then once, of course, the description. This particular operator is under the group data transformation, attribute set reduction, and transformation selection optimization. It uses two deterministic greedy feature selection algorithms to either forward select or backward eliminate your data set. So what it does is, it will take the attributes, the input variables, and try to either select them forward or eliminate them backwardsly by reducing the attribute population to the best fit ones that help describe your output variable. Remember, in nature, even though evolution does not have a particular goal, the organism is best adapted to survive if the mutations um, help, I guess, produce stronger, better offspring that are able to utilize the environment better. So nature likes to minimize energy costs. It likes to um, maximize efficiencies. Even though it really has no goal, it just puts everything in that particular environment, such as a stock market or some th sort of other manufacturing process. It tries to figure out what are the best variables, the best fit attributes to reach your goal. That's why we're doing this. Okay, we've let's run the experiment and see what happens. Run, yes, and yes, and there we go. See how quick it is? Now what I did here was I had asked the experiment to give me an output of the performance as well as show me what the example set was reduced to. Now, if you remember looking in video number four, we had five attributes. Now, in this particular experiment, after we ran that data with the five attributes and label through the optimizer, you could see that it has reduced the set from five attributes to one attribute. So essentially, the forward selection algorithm that we chose has reduced the attributes from 5 to 1 to help best explain the label. Now, what happens if we went back and looked at... Oh, before we do that, let's just take a look at the performance vector. Here you have a root mean square error of 0.269, squared error of 0.072. I don't know if that's good or bad, but we'll live with that for now for the, for the express purpose of this example. So let's go back and let's change the parameters a little bit. In this case, we select here, 
Okay, we're going to limit the generations with, without approval, that's fine. But this time we are going to select the backward direction. And we're going to do a backward, backward elimination. Let's try that here. Yes, 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 okay. Okay, performance vector, slight better improvement, 0.263, squared error, 0 0.069. And let's take a look at the example set. Look, in this case, using a backward, backward elimination algorithm, we end up with three attributes that help best explain the label. Attribute 1, 3, and 4. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about how this works, just go back to here, push the F1, and read the description. And here they have the process on how forward selection works and how the backward elimination works. If that still confuses you, I would suggest checking out Wikipedia. It does have some very good um, tips uh, to help you understand what's going on with genetic, op uh, genetic algorithms. <clears throat> so, let's move on from here. Let's just say, well, what happens if you wanted to try to fool around with the selection schemes and perhaps um, what, uh, what size population you're going to use and how the mutation rates are going to go? Well, Rapid Miner has an operator for that as well. Okay, let's go and replace this operator. I'm going to replace him. I'm going to go to Data Transformation, Attribute Set Reduction and Transformation again. We're going to go to Selection, Optimization, and in this case, we are going to go to evolutionary. This is different than the one we have here, optimized selection. That's the one we have here. We're going to go to optimized selection evolutionary. When I done this, when I did this in the test phase, um, it's tended to disconnect the ports. I don't know why. Um, I think that may be a bug for the German guys. Okay, this looks good. Okay, I'll have to let them know about this. So let's go and reconnect it now. Same thing, this is a nested, nested operator. But now we are going to make some changes. Okay, here you have a choice. Minimum number of attributes, population size, maximum generation, you can make these changes here. And here's the fun part, uh, the selection schemes. You can change the selection schemes, and here you have about seven of them. Um, usually I use roulette, or I use tournament. Sometimes I use stochastic. Roulette wheel essentially takes, um, if I remember correctly, everybody in the population randomly to mate. Tournament, only the most fittest continue to mate. Uh, this could be good or bad. You have to make the choice based on what data you are um, analyzing. But let's just take tournament. You keep best individual weights. P initialize, mutation rates, crossover, crossover type, uniform. I usually do shuffle. You could fool around with this if you want a little more control. So why don't we put, press play and see what happens. Yes. Okay. Performance-wise, we had better performance, 0.249. Squared error, 0 0.062. And in this case, the example set is reduced from five to two attributes. Attribute one and three. Let's go back and fool around with the settings a little bit. Let's not do tournament, let's do roulette wheel. Let's do, um, okay, P crossover, let's do 75%. Uh, let's do one for mutation. Okay, let's see if I did that right. Press play. Now it may take a little bit longer. Oh, that was quick. Fast machines do better, of course. Performance vector, 0.218, even better, 0.047. Example set, oh, in this case, we still got attribute 1 and 3. So for, for this particular experiment, it looks like by fooling around with the population a little bit, really didn't make much of a difference as far as which were the better attributes to help, help explain a label. So there you have it. This is my video tutorial on using genetic algorithms to optimize your data selection set. I hope you found this tutorial very interesting. I certainly do. Genetic algorithms are relatively a new uh, playground in which I tinker in. 
And I look forward to hearing your comments, your questions. I'm always around. You can get me on gtalk at ot.tom or visit my website at www.neuromarkettrends. And before I leave, before I say goodbye, my next video tutorial number six will probably be on using decision trees uh, in relate to a project like a direct mail marketing. And that should be something very interesting in case you are interested in that. Decision trees are great for other business processes as well. So I look forward to hearing from you. This is Thomas Ott for NeuromarketTrends.com. Have a great day.